In this video, I'm going to cover the preferences within Xlights. Now there's a lot to cover, so I'll be moving through this at quite a fast pace. So you access the preferences on the file menu. And if we start at the beginning, this is all your backup options. So having this enabled will make a backup happen when you save a file. Here, a backup is initiated when you launch Xlights. Oh, and here, you're telling Xlights that as well as backing up the Xlights folder, you want to also back up any subfolders and files that sit within that Xlights folder. So I seriously recommend enabling that one. Purge backups. Yeah, if it's set to never, your backup folder will get bigger and bigger and bigger. So I suggest you at least choose one of these so that after so many days, your backup will be purged. The backup directory, if use show folder is enabled, it will back up into your show folder in a folder called backups. And there you can see the various dates of the backups in question. However, you can specify an external folder. So it's something that sits outside of your show folder, which might be, you know, provide a bit more protection. You know, if your show folder got deleted by mistake, you would at least have files somewhere else. Alternative backup allows you to have a second backup location. So this could be stored on something like a network attack storage, something that's you know external from your PC. Uh, and you must initiate this. I think the key is F11 to initiate a manual backup like this. View, tool icon size, that will alter the size of these icons. So if they're taking up too much space, you can reduce them down. OpenGL settings, so I suggest leaving it to auto detect unless you are having some graphical problems. So then you could try and force one of these versions to see if that fixes your problem. Also, if you're having 3D rendering problems or glitches, you can try one of these settings to see if that improves things. Uh, the model handle, I'll just click that. So it's gonna take a few seconds now, every time you make a change, it's unfortunately, it's not an instant change. Okay, but the model handle refers to these little blue points here. So I have those set to extra large, so it gives me at least a big point to click onto. And let's go back to sequencer and preferences. Okay, so we come down, uh, effects assist window. So when you select a file, this is the effects assist. And you can specify with that setting whether you, you know, if you don't use this, you can have it so it doesn't show or it will only show when it's relevant to a particular effect. Show player controls on house preview. So I bring a house preview. With that enabled, you get these play, pause, etc. icons on your house preview so you can start and stop your sequence from the preview moving on auto show house preview so when you play a sequence the house preview will automatically display effects grid small this just changes the size of the text and the spacing on your props here. So I don't recommend you select some of these big ones. You just end up with no space to actually do any sequencing, but it's your choice. Icon backgrounds. So on effects like this one here, you can see, I can see that it's white and then the pixels are going to be red. If I turn that off, all I would see would be the icon of the effect itself. So I prefer to have that. Node values, if I was to, in fact, if I was to double click right down into, an, uh, into a prop, you can actually go right down to individual nodes and see the color of the nodes. I've got it disabled, so I can't. Uh, however, unless you're going to be placing effects right on individual nodes, all this does, having it enabled, was, is increase render time. So your rendering will be a little bit better. Don't worry, you can enable it on a per sequence. You know, if you need it on a sequence and you want to access a single node, you can enable it for, for then. 
snap to timing marks yeah you know, when you're sliding an effect on the timeline you know as you get close to a timing mark it will click into place so that might be easier you know make it easier for you to align effects to timing marks double click mode by default it's set to play timing okay I like this so if I click text here you can see it opens up an edit and I can edit by double clicking however if I do still want to highlight the timing mark I can still press the shift key and double click and it still selects that timing mark so you still got access to the other setting as well but I prefer the edit one so that one is there small waveform just makes this waveform smaller again I prefer it to be big so I can analyze the waveform correctly and see any audio transitions then display transition marks uh, that is for things like this you know where you're fading in or fading out or providing transition effects this little green line is showing the duration of the the, uh, it, the transition in effect and the red one the out effect so that preference will turn that off so i see no real reason to to turn that off okay so leave that on then we're going to sequences render on save so every time you save a sequence it will do a, a full render yeah that can become a bit of a pain particularly when you're building a sequence and you you're saving quite regularly you, you know you're continually rendering so I prefer to manually do my renders by clicking the render button, but it's your choice. Default model blending for a new sequence. Doesn't really say much about what, what, what it is, but I suggest just leave this enabled. I've read the manual, but I'm not exactly sure what it does. So comments in the, uh, you know, put, put you know, a solution in the comments. Render cache. Yeah, I suggest you have this enabled. Uh, what that does is if I go to my show folder you can see there is a folder here called render cache and if I go into a file I haven't run that one so yeah I've got to have one that I've run <laughs> yeah so you can see here there's a cache so this can speed up things like rendering and, and things like that because you've already got some data pre-cached but you can disable that you can also choose to move the render cache to a different location. Auto save. So if you're working on uh, a sequence and X light crashes, at least you hopefully won't lose all your work because it will have saved, you know, between that time. Then we've got some where you can specify locations of where you store your media files. So X lights will automatically look for files if it can't find the files it will look in these folders and then we move on save seq file on save so the fseq file is the file that actually specifies you know which light sh which pixel should be turned off what on what color etc and that's the file that you transfer along with your audio file to your falcon player etc so uh, you can make it that when you save a, a sequence, it automatically generates that. You can choose the version. Yeah, unless there's a specific reason, just stick with the default, you know, but if you've got a controller that doesn't support one of these, the V2, then you may need to change that. By default, the FSEQs are saved along, you know, in the show folder, but I prefer to specify my own folder so that if I want to transfer my FSEQs to my Pi, I know that all of them will be sitting within that one folder. So it keeps everything nice and clean and it keeps them separate from my actual sequences. So there's that one. Then we move on to output. So this is if you want to actually send some sync data. So you know, if you're doing eArtNet or E131, you can send some sync packets as well, and you can specify IP address, etc. I have no need for that, but if you do, if you want to read up on how that is configured. Next one is random effects. X Lights has a built-in auto 
sequence creator where it just throws a ton of random effects on any props that you specify. Uh, yeah, you, you, you know, the results can vary, but uh, here you can specify which effects you would like to be included in that auto generation process. So if there's some effects you really hate, you can just untick them. Next one is colors. So here you can specify colors that are used for things like timing tracks and other parts of the system. And then finally, we've got an email address. So if you put an email address in here, any bug reports, you know, any crash reports that uh, will, will have your email embedded in. Hardware video decoding will allow your GPU to assist with the video decoding. However, some people have problems with videos not playing correctly. So if that's the case, you can leave that unticked. And then uh, you've also got the ability that you can actually link the layout tab and the controllers together so that when you save one, it will automatically save the information to your controllers, uh, vice versa. And then you can also link the controller upload. So inputs and outputs okay so the only one there is prompt issues during batch render yeah must admit i'm not sure what that one does i haven't looked that up but uh so my feeling is leave it ticked uh in fact just to completeness let me just quickly look that up in the manual uh, if it's there no Oh, I, I missed this. I missed these two points as well. So when you're packaging a sequence, you have got the choose the choice to exclude any presets you've used or any audio as well. Generally, you'll want to include those. But if you're worried about, you know, you're giving it someone you you you, know, you don't want to breach copyright or anything, you can actually tick those. Uh, and yep, there's no information in the manual for this one. But prompt issues during batch render. I assume it just gives you warnings during a batch render. Okay, so that's all of the features. So until next time, see you later.